नमस्कार दोस्तों मैं शिवानंद उपाध्याय आपका स्वागत करता हूं हमारे YouTube चैनल केमिस्ट्री एकेडमी फॉर आई टी जेई एंड नीट दिस इज अवर प्रॉब्लम सीरीज फॉर जेई एडवांस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द थ्योरी थ्रू प्रॉब्लम्स होप दिस विल बी यूजफुल फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू आई विल रिक्वेस्ट यू टू लाइक एंड सब्सक्राइब अवर चैनल द रेशियो ऑफ रिडबर कॉन्स्टेंट फॉर हाइड्रोजन विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू सिंगल आयोनाइज हीलियम आई एंड इज आर दे हैव गिवेन द आंसर इन टर्म्स ऑफ दिस इज सिंबल ऑफ रिड्यूज मास रिड्यूज मास ऑफ हाइड्रोजन अपॉन रिड्यूज मास ऑफ हीलियम प्लस रिड्यूज मास ऑफ हीलियम प्लस अपॉन रिड्यूज मास ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एंड दिस इज मास ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन इन टू मास ऑफ प्रोटोन अपॉन मास ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन प्लस मास ऑफ प्रोटोन एंड सो ऑन so this question is based on the first thing we should discuss here is rydberg constant most of you know that rydberg constant when we write the value of wave number 1 upon lambda is equal to rhz square so this is rydberg constant for hydrogen atom z square 1 upon n1 square minus 1 upon n2 square so this most of you know but you should also know that rydberg constant is also in terms of energy so in terms of wave number when we are writing we are saying that the value of rydberg constant is equal to 109677 per centimeter but you should also know that when you are writing the energy of electron for a single electron system in nth orbit you are writing en is equal to minus 13.6 z square upon n square electron volt per atom so here 13.6 is also a rydberg constant this is also rydberg constant for hydrogen atom in terms of energy so this is also known as rydberg constant so you should aware because this part is given in ncert and most of you are using this also these these both are given in ncert so rydberg constant for hydrogen atom with respect to singly ionized helium ion so the first thing is that why we are using the concept of reduced mass because if we apply the concept of bohr's theory with the help of bohr's theory we are not able to distinguish because according to bohr's theory when we are writing the energy of electron in nth orbit we are writing that energy is equal to minus kz e square total energy i am writing here upon 2r where the value of r is n square h square upon 4 pi square mass of electron kz e square so here if i put the value from here i can write that the energy of electron in nth orbit should be equal to if i am putting the value this is kz square upon 2 the value of r if i put n square h square and this will be 4 pi square m kz e square on simplification i am getting that this value is equal to 2 pi square mass of electron this is mass of electron k square z square e to the power 4 upon n square h square so here for deuterium atom the value of z and hydrogen atom the value of z is same mass is electron is a fundamental particle so the mass of electron will be same so according to bohr's theory we where we are assuming that the nucleus is stationary and the electron is moving around the nucleus in circular path the energy of hydrogen atom and the hydro energy of deuterium atom will be same so if the energy will be same the spectral lines for hydrogen and deuterium is expected to be same but on a doing experiment we got that deuterium has different spectral lines with respect to hydrogen atoms and because of that the concept of reduced mass came where we are assuming that not only the electron the nucleus is also revolving around the center of mass so the electron and the nucleus both are revolving around the center of mass so in short i can say that in place of mass of electron if i modified this equation and write that what is the total energy in nth orbit then that should be is equal to minus 2 pi square in place of mass of electron we have to use the concept of reduced mass k square z square e to the power 4 upon n square h square so based on that they are asking that the ratio of rydberg constant for hydrogen with respect to singly ionized helium ion is r 
So not mentioning that they are discussing about the red bar constant corresponding to the wave number or the red bar constant corresponding to the energy of electron. From both, the answer will come same because the other factors will cancel out. So we can take any one of them to simplify the question. So I'm taking energy, right? So if I'm writing that, what is the energy of electron in nth orbit of hydrogen atom divided by energy of helium plus ion in nth orbit then we can simplify here the other factors will cancel out here we'll get the reduced mass of hydrogen atom upon the reduced mass of helium plus ion so the, the other things will cancel out this energy ratio is equal to this which is equal to the red bar constant for energy right so this will be the value we can say here that this is this ratio is equal to the red bar constant for hydrogen. The first option, if we check that the first option is correct, the option is correct. Now, if I simplify, we already know that uh, the value of reduced mass 1 upon mu for hydrogen atom is equal to 1 upon mass of electron plus 1 upon mass of nucleus of hydrogen atom that is mass of proton. So if I simplify for hydrogen atom I can write that the value of reduced mass for hydrogen atom is equal to mass of electron into mass of proton divided by mass of electron plus mass of proton. Same way I can write that the reduced mass for helium ion, right? So helium ion is equal to 1 upon mass of electron plus 1 upon nucleus of alpha particle, right? We, you, uh, nucleus of helium ion is nucleus of alpha particle, right? Nuclei is same for both. So I can write here that 1 upon mu for helium ion is equal to mass of alpha particle mass of electron upon mass of electron into mass of alpha particle or we can write here that mu of helium plus ion is equal to mass of electron mass of alpha particle divided by mass of alpha particle plus mass of electron so on simplification now i can write that the ratio of red bar constant right so here we can say that the first option is correct then the second option will be wrong for the third option we can check here we can write that red bar constant for hydrogen atom upon red bar constant for helium plus ion is equal to the ratio of reduced mass of hydrogen atom upon reduced mass of helium plus ion and which can be further written in this form because already we have derived so i'm writing here that this value is equal to mass of electron into mass of proton upon mass of electron plus mass mass of proton multiplied by mass of alpha particle plus mass of electron upon mass of alpha particle into mass of electron. So on simplification, uh, if you see the option, since the option is given in this form, so from there we are getting that C option is correct. If C option is correct, then definitely we can check about the D option. In case of D option, mass of alpha, mass of electron numerator, this part is correct. The denominator part, this part is right. And here mass of electron and mass of electron will cancel out. So this is mass of proton upon mass of alpha. But here it is mentioned mass of alpha upon mass of electron, right? So that is wrong. So D option is wrong. So the answer should be A and C. Answer should be A and C. Question number two, the Schrodinger wave equation for hydrogen atom in terms of polar coordinates which can be solved by separating the variables. So the Schrodinger wave equation in terms of r theta and phi is equal to radial wave function and angular wave function. Angular wave function can be a variable of theta or variable of phi where r is the radial function which is a function of r only and theta theta and phi phi are angular functions. The solution of theta equation gives quantum number. So already we have discussed that the complete wave function for hydrogen-like system depends on three quantum number, principal quantum number, azimuthal quantum number, and magnetic quantum number. Magnetic quantum number can be written either M or ML. So when we are writing this, it has two part radial wave function. 
So this radial wave function is representing a suborbit and the suborbit depends on two quantum number, principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum number. So the radial part of wave function depends on principal and azimuthal quantum number while the angular part theta is a function of two quantum numbers L and ML while the third function which is also angular function right phi it only depends on the value of ml. So we can see here that the, this is angular part. So they can ask question that angular wave function depends on which quantum number. So we can say that angular wave function is independent of principal quantum number. I can write here that angular wave function is independent of principal quantum number. It only depends on azimuthal quantum number and magnetic quantum number. So the question is very simple. They are discussing about theta. So the value of theta depends on L and ML. So B and C option we are getting as an answer. So answer will be BC.